as you know, when he came back, I think it was reclaiming as his firstborn, and he gave us the rest of the tools we needed to actually realize this, this amazing media world that we live in. Uh, the iPod came first because he thought music sucked and he could make it better because people were stealing music on the web. Uh, then he looked at phones and said, God, gazillions of people use phones and these phones are all shitty, so I'm going to go make a great phone and I'm going to let people do all kinds of things that the phone people weren't figuring out they could do with a phone. <laughs> and then, of course, he invented iPad, which everybody said, what are you going to do with that, except for all the 8,000 things that people have figured out to do with it since we <laughs> introduced it, in terms of touching you, using a feeling, you know, your, your media, your information. And I always have to mention the Apple stores. He said, you know, where we sell our stores, where we, where the stores where we sell our computers, they're ugly and they suck. I'm going to go do a better store. Mm -hmm. uh, just so people could go in and touch and realize the possibilities of this technology and how many human beings are in an Apple store every day and every night. The one in New York is 24 hours and 24 hours a day. There's people in there touching this, these forms of media that, uh, that we're all now trying to harness and figure out and use in the business we call advertising and marketing. Hey, I have to jump in with a real quick question, a comment on this, because you notice on your resume, if you've got a great brand in your past, you did something for them, uh, the brand value of that on your resume goes up and down with the stock price of the company. And when Lee and Steve got back together, uh, was it 96, 97, Apple was at a nadir. The board had tried to sell that company uh, to anybody who would, would uh, take it. You know, uh, Larry Ellison, uh, Sun, uh, AT&T, 7-Eleven. Uh, <laughs> the company was broke. They were on this verge of bankruptcy. Lee called me and asked about this line they were thinking of. And he said, you know, we only have one good product. It's a laptop that tends to catch on fire. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, so the story of Jobs' return in <clears throat> days that were so dark. Now, of course, as uh, Lee and uh, Shia Day Team, you know, Team have gone on to make history after history, and Apple has become the uh, biggest, most powerful company in technology, uh, my resume is worth more, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to talk about think different in that moment in time uh, when we're done. But I just want to I just want to do one other little tangent, because you guys are all sitting here and you're wrecking your brains about how do we do Twitter and how do we do Facebook and how do we what happened. The company that most of your business magazines would say is the role model for everything from inventiveness to marketing genius. Love television commercials. Love billboards, love print ads, love a store full of beautiful graphics. Steve Jobs was passionate about all the traditional media that people are now thinking is maybe the being eclipsed by all this other media. I would suggest that, that there is probably as much or more social media conversations about Apple Computer than any brand would ever want. But they were created not by advertising people and marketing people trying to create social media conversations. They did brilliant things and they were a genius, wonderful, lovable country, company that lots of people decided they wanted to connect this with, they wanted to talk about, they wanted to talk to, they wanted to share. I believe that's the real dynamic of the media world we live in. Become a great company and tell beautiful stories that, that resonate and people like and love and appreciate and trust, and you'll stimulate and create the social conversations that you want out there as opposed to thinking it needs to be uh, force started you know, by some uh, marketing activity. I think that that is the genius of new media the audience is now really smart, and they're going to figure out what brands they want to spend time with, what brands they want to share with their friends, what brands they want to go uh, go see that spot they just did on YouTube, or that film that they just posted, or that trailer. 
people are going to figure out how to use this media, and the idea that we are going to manipulate them into using it the way we want them to, I think is bullshit. So be a great brand and do beautiful, eloquent advertising. share with you something that's very personal and it has to do with when Steve came back to Apple, as Steve, uh, as Steve said, they were on life support and he was determined that he was going to save his firstborn, he was going to save his company, and he was going to dedicate it to all the things that he always believed in. And he always believed in creativity, he always believed that the creative people that invent and Articulate whether it be music or art, those people were the people on the planet that he respected and honored and wanted to pay tribute to and remind people, most of them creative at the time, who were still using Mac to remain faithful to the brand. And so we did this commercial uh, called Here's to the Crazy Ones that launched the idea of Think Different, which was kind of to a placeholder until we had products to sell, but it, the highest compliment I ever got from Steve was, this gave me the message to my company that, that I needed for them to understand what we had to do in the next few years. So it basically, again, good, good strong ideas end up, I think, impacting our clients and their cultures, as well as the, the audience that, that pay attention to it. Anyway, this, Commercial became a very emotional, very personal piece of work for Steve and I, and, and it ran on Toy Story the first time it ever ran on television, which was kind of lovely. Uh, and we worked all night trying to get it done, and we had two voices on it. One was Richard Dreyfus, and I had convinced Steve to record the copy as well because he cared about it, he helped write it, he believed it, he lived it, and he did a amazing job of reading it, but ultimately he chose Richard Dreyfus for the guy smarter than me. Uh, it can't be about me, it has to be about Apple. We're trying to rebuild our company. So he was he was right again, but I still love this version, so I'm going to share with you, uh, here's to the crazy ones with Steve Jobs. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things, they push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do.